Hi, I'm Gwen Barood. I'm a parent advisor with Fort Worth ISD. There's so much to love about this job. I get to play with babies all day. I get to hug babies all day. But the best part is being that resource for the families so that they have the tools that they need for their child. Basically, I fell in love with sign language. As I was growing up, I had a few cousins who were deaf, and I would see them at family reunions in this beautiful sign, and I was just enamored with it. I didn't know that you could do something about that until I went to college and found out there was such a thing as a sign language interpreting program. I joined that, finished that, became an interpreter in the field in the educational setting, and what I found with it is there is I was limited in my role as a sign language interpreter when I wanted to address some things noted with communication delays. That led me to decide to go back to school and get my master's degree in deaf education. Then I became a classroom teacher. I did that for a year. And though I enjoyed that, I thought I really wanted to see about itinerant. I'm one of those people that don't like to be kind of cooped up in a classroom. So I'm like, I kind of, maybe I need some freedom. I did have an opportunity with Fort Worth ISD to do so, enjoyed that immensely. And then at the end of that year, I was offered a parent advisory position and I nabbed that up. Well, I would say that I didn't understand the whole collaboration aspect of it. I really had to know, oh, wait, there's these different agencies. I have ECI, I have the school district, I have medical personnel, I have other therapies in, that I have to work with. So it was kind of incorporate all of that into this one role. I would have to say the referral process can be quite daunting. We have to be able to under, understand that we need to work with ECI to help them get the information that they need. But sometimes that can be a challenge just trying to kind of connect with that person. And also the referral process is being letting ECI know that, hey, just call us when you need us to, to know that we're available. So I think what I would have, would have liked would be to have more access to the program itself. What we, even though I had the training in the classroom and as an itinerant, one of the issues that I had was parent advisory tends to be kind of separate from the regional day school program itself. Where you, have, you have your community within the itinerant program, you have it within the regional day school program for the deaf, but the parent advisor tends to be off on their own. So I would have liked to have known a little bit more about the position before. That's a good question. I really didn't have a problem with it as far as going into new homes. That was not an issue for me. What, was, what I found challenging was making sure that I respected that this was their home and that every family has a different routine. I had to, like, sometimes I had to take off my shoes. Sometimes families didn't want me to take off my shoes. Sometimes there were time, times where I needed to coach a little bit more to help a parent kind of overcome some obstacles in that respect. So I, I would say that was it, you know, that was it just kind of becoming acclimated to the routine. Yes, the most important one is I need to make my objective clear to the parents. When they see someone such as myself, I come in, I'm a teacher, I have to let them know that, hey, I'm here for you. I am your resource. So I'm going to tell you how my sessions are going to go. I'm going to give you this lesson. I'm going to model this lesson for you. And then I'm going to let you take that over because if you don't understand how to do that, you're never going to get it. So, I, so understand that I'm just basically like your coach. Oh, that is a good question. <laughs> the question. The question of the day. Um, I would say, first of all, there are a couple of things that you, we need to know about staying organized. Many parent advisors also serve as, as itinerants. 
So for those situations, because that's, that's how I began, I would have, okay, schools would happen on this day. Parent advisory sessions would happen on this day. So what I would do with families is I would want to put like this child Tuesday at 10 every week. That gave the consistency for the parents and myself and that also closed off my schedule so that I can schedule other things like arts, um, evaluations for, uh, for ch child find evaluations, school evaluations, or my visits with the schools as well. So that was a big thing, just keeping it on the calendar. Then when it came to progress notes, I was a person who would type up what I saw at the session really quick and then come back and redo that progress note either later in the, usually later that night or later in the week. Okay, so if we have a specific routine that we're working with, that was usually the time that I did it, except for like bath time, that sometimes didn't work out so well. So we might have to create that particular time during our session. But like a feeding time, that would that's easy because you could say, okay, I'm gonna come at 11. If it's, a, a big one is play routine. We get so much information through the play routine, so a lot of times that would be, that would be nice and open. So there were a lot of time. You can play all the time. Well, I would say you do need a toolkit, but that toolkit has to include things that need to stay with the family. That means buy things like bubbles, Play-Doh, the little individual ones that you can keep with the family, crayons that you can get from restaurants, I usually beg for more, um, and also books. I would get books from garage sales. I would talk to parents and say, or, or not parents, I would talk to people at a garage sale and say, you know, I'm a parent advisor. Let me tell you about what I do. And a lot of times I get those books for free. <laughs> um, so that that is a good thing. Just always think, these are anything that you bring to that house needs to stay at that house. And then secondly, understand that you are the parent's resource and not the baby's resource. The goal is the baby, but the channel to that are those parents. Okay. I'm going to say take advantage of every training opportunity you can get. When I came into this, not knowing as much as I thought I should know about parent advisory, I got in touch with other seasoned parent advisors. I followed them. I also got in touch with audiologists and said, hey, I want you to go help me understand an ABR report. Um, help me understand Cochlear, this, this brand of cochlear implant, this brand, this brand of hearing aid. Um, if you're not strong, feeling strong in your sign skills, brush up because your parents need that as well. It's a very important aspect of your job. You need to be a well-rounded teacher for this to work out. I think as far as imparting some of my knowledge and the reason that I've been so successful in this field is I, I do understand that it's not black or white. There are so many times that we have to kind of look at a situation and decide, hey, this is what I need to do. So be flexible. That I would have to say that. And also understand that what you're doing impacts so many areas of that baby's life. You can, you can impact, uh, you can incorporate your communication targets into walking, eating, or feeding. You can incorporate it into just a variety of areas. So understand that you can impact not just the communication, but all aspects of life.